So this is a little look at how I went about uh, making the sound, so getting the samples for the instrument. So what I uh, noticed, you know, loading up the the original file in RX um, was, well, there's a, just a lot of uh, information here in the tracks. So if I just start playing... <laughs> There's a lot of information there. But I could see there was some rather interesting sort of core frequencies coming out. So what I wanted to do here, using this um, this time frequency selection tool, come in here, pick one of the interesting frequencies. And then what you've got here is this nice uh, selection tool that allows you to pick harmonics that you want to also select. So you can see if I just play just that one tone, and then I can select the harmonics. So I picked um, a range of those different um, harmonics and a range of different frequencies. I saved them out um, using the name of the frequency. So down in this corner here, um, you get a little frequency for each of these. So I would have done the, the bass frequency. And then what I wanted to do is um, get a little bit of extra color that I could use for a more modulated signal. And so a bit like other tools, what you can do here is you can kind of take your original uh, selection and just expand it a little bit so by pressing the the shift key you can see you can kind of overwrite that and just get up take a little bit more kind of color um, around uh, each of the selections so if I play that now um, we're gonna get more sound around it if you don't quite like exactly what you've got there you can press the uh, press the uh, alt key and you can just kind of erase parts of it so there's a you know I can come in here and erase this little bit here because it's not chopping properly maybe a little bit from this section here and so you can kind of pick and, and choose what um, parts you want so then what I would have done with both the original and um, these is save those out so you're coming up here just doing save and export selection and You'll see um, here are some of those uh, individual selections. So you can see this is around the 600 frequency. And I didn't pick all the harmonics. I've picked um, uh, three. And then for the wider uh, one, which is where I just widen each one, you can just see there's slightly more um, frequency information going on there. So just comparing those two, there's this. And then the wider option. So it's just subtly more um, coloured. And then I have each of these different uh, um, frequencies. Some of them I didn't do all the harmonics. They're slightly different. I just what sounded good really on each one. And so then I loaded up the samples into Logic. And each of these blue ones you can see here, these are the original sample files um, that I recorded and then the orange are the bounce in place when I did a little bit of effects and really each track I didn't do very much tinkering a little bit of a fade in and a fade out and then all I was doing then is doing a little bit of tuning for each one so if I solo that um, you can see it's sort of this one's hovering around the A sharp and then I uh, the only other thing there is I put on a, a black hole reverb just not a particularly um, uh, deep amount of reverb on these uh, but just to kind of uh, smooth it out and then I bounced each one in place ready to load up in contact. So if we take a look now uh, in contact you can see here um, we've got the uh, two groups. One of the two groups has the, the main samples and then the mod one has those slightly wider uh, ranged samples to be used as a modulation source. I've laid them out across the, the keyboard, uh, fairly straightforward, uh, fixing to the root note that I tuned them to. It's not entirely even, but it seems to work fine. Um, and each of these samples has then got a loop uh, within them so I can sustain them uh, for as long as I want. Um, and then the other, I guess, kind of interesting part of this is uh, if we come down here, you'll see I've got an additional modulation source here uh, with MIDI CC1, so for the mod wheel. And what it does is it's pulling down the volume of the main group. And then if we look at the mod group, it's doing the other direction, although it's 
pulling it all the way up uh, from 0 to 127 whereas the other one was just dipping it a little bit um, and that allows me to then use that mod wheel to kind of bring in the sort of slightly modulated sound got a little bit of effects in here a bit of tape saturation tiny bit of plate reverb just to add a little bit of interest and then in terms of scripting uh, we've got some fairly simple scripts here just sets up the wallpaper sets up this little dial here um, and the dial is responding then uh, to control events so if I move the, the mod wheel up and down you can see it's changing its value uh, but equally I can use it to drag up and down the mod wheel I learned this from Dave Hillowitz uh, so there'll be a link in the description to the video uh, where he described how to do all this uh, custom uh, knob uh, definitions and um, and that's about it let's just uh, see it in its performance view uh, so you can see I've got this nice little background here uh, with the with the bagpipes and so let's listen to the the, the mod wheel So you can see it's just sort of adding some of that extra color from the other samples. So let's have a quick listen to a demo. <laughs> 